Hi everybody, welcome to Nature Boy 070, where we learn about the wildlife and all of its surroundings. Let's start today our special little video here on determining the difference between female ducks and male ducks. By looking at this picture, can you tell me which ones are the males and which ones are the females? <coughs> Excuse me. That's right. The female is standing there. You can see her little orange paws, or I would say her flippers. She is brown, has white stripes, well, white lining, whereas the males look like they are completely grayish with some brown striping. Now, the notable difference between the two of them, of course, is the top of the head, and that is where you can really notice the difference, all right? Let me approach one uh, duck here so that you can see the real difference above their heads here. You see, there's a, this is the male duck, and as you can see, there's a bluish, greenish tinge on the head. Whereas here, the female duck has a brown top of the head. So that is one common characteristic between the two of them, whereas the male, if I approach this one here without scaring him, whoops, I did scare him. My apologies, sir. So as you can see, the striping is also right down the middle. Whoop, and he's a little bit aggressive. He's letting the other one not to get too close. So that's the male duck. The male duck will typically have a greenish, bluish aura above its head to mimic the sky and also, and also the waters, along with light gray feathers on the side and a black stripe on the top. Whereas a female duck, such as this one here, as you can see, the top of the head is brown, blackish, blackish brown. Feathers are typically brown with a light tinge of gray at the bottom. And they have beautiful flippers, don't they? Yes. So typically the reason for this adaptation, as we call it, is so that they can mimic their surroundings when they're nesting. Females will spend a lot of time with the eggs hidden in the bushes somewhere, usually in marshes. You can look this up on Google and you'll see what marshes are. It's typically filled with water, reeds, and lots of feeding grounds. Now, again, if we look at the male duck right here, as you can see the top of his head, you can't really see clearly here because I don't have light showing, shining right on its head. But if I go over here, these two ducks, you can see sort of a bluish greenish aura over there. So going back to my female duck right here, as you can see, when she lies down, she has to mimic. That means she has to match the colors around her. In her case, a lot of the colors around her are going to be brown with some a little bit of, you know, little whitish grays to show like spacing between the leaves. So it looks like she is actually part of the foliage. Typically what they'll also do to make sure they're completely hidden is what this guy's doing. Notice what he's doing with his beak. Yeah, he's hiding it. Because if you are in the bushes and you're hiding and your beak looks like this, you stand out. Another reason why they do this, the reason why they, let me go back here, why they bury their beaks inside is so that their breathing is warm air coming into the lungs to keep them warm. Now, typically duck feathers are very warm. They keep them isolated and they keep the air and the water from entering and touching their skin. With that said, do you know what buoyancy means? That's right, the ability to float. The reason why these guys here, all of these guys, all of these lovely ducks, let me pan out here for you. All of these ducks are able to float. It's because most of their body is fat. Now again, in one of my videos, I did, I did mention that if you take a glass of water and you fill it halfway, and then you take a drop of oil, whether it's olive oil, sunflower seed oil, grapeseed oil, any kind of oil, vegetable oil, and you drop just a drop on top, you'll notice that the oil actually stays to the surface. It actually floats. The reason be being is that the water density is greater than the oil's density. So it's able to support it. Now, the reason why their feathers are so nice and light, it's because if you ever find a feather on the ground, I dare you to cut it. Go home, take a pair of scissors with your parents' permission and make sure your parents are there to watch you do it. And cut the feather right in half. And I want you to look at the tubing part of the feather. And you'll notice that, in fact, it is a tube. Look at this beautiful feather here. Isn't that wonderful? And the reason for that is so that it is actually very light and that they're able to, when they're in flight, to flap their wings without much effort. All right, so I hope you've enjoyed this educational video and I'll talk to you soon.